A little while back, we installed some LED lights in the grill of my 2020 Silverado, and they're pretty freaking awesome. The big problem though with these kits is the toggle and switch they include as part of the kit is proven to decrease testosterone by 1.5% every time you hit that clicker. Fortunately, GM's actually got a part for this, and there's so much more room for activities. GM Upfitter Switch Kit. We're gonna have five auxiliary switches that gives us plenty of room for activities. But the main piece I am correcting today that I'm just sick of is this switch right here. I absolutely hate this load of garbage. So my Rough Country Black Series LEDs I have integrated in my front grill. Absolutely love the LEDs, but I hate the switch. So this install is relatively involved and is why it's taken so long to get to this point where we're actually doing it. We have to remove a large majority of this center console and dash to get it in. And then we go through the firewall and get it wired up to the battery. Now, since we're already in here and tearing this panel off, I'm gonna redo all of my carbon fiber, the vents, the doors. I'm gonna change it up quite a bit today. And since we are pulling panels off, I might as well do it now. Now, currently across all of our trim panels, we have this gloss carbon fiber wrap from Vivint Vinyl. This is probably the best looking gloss carbon there is out there. In order to achieve this gloss, what Vivint does is put a thick, clear film over the top of carbon fiber. But the problem with that, it makes the film incredibly thick and hard to work around corners. I'm certain a professional wrapper can definitely knock this out and make it look fantastic but a novice like myself has some trouble in getting it to lay down correctly. So what we're doing, we have from 3M, the 2080 series carbon fiber. This is the same stuff we've used on our F1 LE project. This front splitter, we wrapped the inside bumper cover and this bow tie with all the intricate bends and shapes. That wrap hasn't peeled up even all the way through winter. So no doubt this is a fantastic wrap. The adhesive is much better than the Vivint. So this is what we're gonna go with. Pros and cons of wrapping. To me, it's extremely fun, relaxing, you get focused in on it, but it takes incredibly long, especially when you're doing little, small, meticulous pieces. But regardless, we got the inside pretty much done. We have the 3M 2080 series done on all the panels. We integrated the ocean color here on the lower trim, here in the center, again on the other side, and in the back. Gloss black on the inside vent. And on this side, we threw in just a little touch of that ocean color. I actually like that contrast a lot. another night. It is time to start disassembling all of this. We put it back together because we ran out of time, but we have this beautifully wrapped carbon fiber trim with this ocean accent. Looks phenomenal, but it's coming right back off because it's finally time to start tearing all this out. So our new upfitter switch kit can go in. Essentially what we're going to do is start at the center console, pop this out, pop this up, get to the center, got to pull this out a little bit, and then we get to the top, we get to the bottom, makes complete sense. It does not, but Get to work. Oh, 
kind of a pain to get off. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pause every once in a while and kind of walk through what to watch out for here. What we've done so far is each side has its own kind of side panel here with several of our clips on the inside. The driver's side does have a seven millimeter bolt. So what we did was break this loose, pull it out. I was getting caught on this top side. I didn't realize that this actually pushes in this way. So when you're disassembling it, you're pulling these out, but this top piece, you gotta push it back in order for it to unlatch from the center. Same thing on the other side. You don't have to pull this all the way off, just get it loose here at the top. And then once you do that, you come here, what you do on this center piece is you pry up right here on these two sides. That'll dislodge that guy and that guy. And once you do, you basically have to put a little muscle on it, pull up from this side, and it will pop all of these clips on the bottom loose. Once you do that, you'll be able to pull it out. Now there is one cord on my, I went ahead and removed that. That way I could pull it out and put it here on the table. So this is where we are so far. Next up, we're gonna start working our way up. So we have a radio trim. We're gonna pull this bottom piece off as well. We're gonna have to remove essentially this entire infotainment center and then work our way to the top of the gauge cluster. Whew. This was a pain. This process isn't difficult. I'm taking my time really trying not to break any clips. This was the probably most difficult part of this so far. It's so awkwardly positioned there at the bottom of the radio. It's hard to get leverage up and behind it. And you got five different clips holding it soundly in place. And then from there, you go to remove this radio bezel, including the head unit. You have a few T15 bolts, which you take out, including a few seven millimeter bolts there at the bottom. Once you do that, get behind her, get some leverage, Pop this thing out, this is relatively easy to remove. Once this is out, you're gonna remove the outside of the trim here. This is simple to pop out with your hands. And then from there, we popped out the top of the gauge cluster. Yes, this is a lot to remove for something little going right there, but this is all necessary to get there. On this side, same deal. We have this panel that pops right off. From there, you have a T15 and a T15. And then this air vent pops out. You unplugged it just to get it out of the way. And then from here, we're on to finally this panel, which we were, this whole process is for. We have our parking brake, we have our start stop button, and our hood release latch we'll need to remove from this. So no broken clips yet. Keep it going. Long last, with nearly all my dash panels removed, the bottom section is now off, because we are here now. So we have what was currently in the truck and what is going in. Again, this is a GM part, so fit and finish is going to be exact. This is the exact same material. So what we're gonna do now is transfer the parking brake to here, as well as the start stop button. And since it is out, I actually might throw some carbon fiber on this. I know it sounds silly and stupid, but we've done the inside. It's nice to have some of these accents done in that vinyl carbon. Good morning, guys. We're about to embark on the fun part of this, which is all the wiring nightmare. We're gonna do it from the battery all the way back into the cab. Last night we went ahead and hooked everything up we needed. We have our upfitter switches here, our parking brakes in, our start stop, as well as everything wrapped in that carbon fiber. This is gonna go right in place of the stock one that just came out. I shouldn't say stock, this is still technically stock. 
In regards to the wiring, I've actually gone in and read the instructions. And I think it's funny because they indicate multiple times in here that this is intended for use by professional technicians, not a do-it-yourselfer. They must have assumed that an idiot like me would attempt this himself, so disclaimer. So this is how the wiring is gonna go down. Before you put any of the paneling back on, you need to get all the wires run. We're gonna connect our new fuse box and switches here directly up behind that knee bolster panel. And then the few cables that are hanging down here, this took a little while to find. This guy, this is a 14 pin connector, connects. We have this guy, and this is where that gray plug is gonna go. What I couldn't figure out for a while, there's actually a fake connector plugged in just to protect it. So you're gonna pull that out before you hook anything up. So what we're gonna do is mount this thing up here behind the knee bolster, get this one hooked up. This one's gonna go to the back of the new knee bolster, gonna hook up to the switch panel. And then all of these are our auxiliary power wires. That cable's gonna run through the firewall into the cab. We're gonna hook it up to the back of this guy. And then that one is gonna plug directly into the new box. Clear as mud? Perfect, let's go. Now, before I put everything back together, I'm gonna throw a piece of probably yoga mat in here to press up against that because that's gonna rattle really bad. So this guy, you're gonna run to the back side of your switch kit, but you need to go through that hole there. So we're gonna go up and behind, up through here. So this next part's probably gonna be the most fun. So we gotta run this cable from the battery terminal up across the top of the engine bay and into the cab through that little rubber grommet right there. So we're gonna cut that top off, slide that cord all the way through into the cab and hook it up to that box we just put in there. But given GM wraps this thing in like this heat shield that's really chrome and ugly and this is gonna sit right at the top there, I'm gonna cover this in like another wire coupling. A few different things have happened. First off, we have our wire wrapped in an insulation tape. Instead of using the wire loom, I went ahead and just did a high temp anti-vibration insulation tape. We run all of our mounting points up underneath this shroud here. One, two, three, four. And then we've gone into the cab. I simply cut a slit in that rubber piece there, put a little WD-40 to help it slide in and then slid it in. I need to go find it now up underneath the dash. We also have all the electrical stuff figured out and wired in. You actually can't get this wrong. 60 amp fuse, 200 amp fuse. We have our power cable going to the cab, but next we're gonna hop underneath the dash, start routing that cable where it used to go. <laughs> Gas pedal straight up about 18 inches. It's there behind all that foam and insulation. All right, so if this is too much detail for you guys, be sure to leave it in the comments below so I know for future videos. But we have finally gotten our cord from the inside of the engine bay, ran it over the top of this vent, and we are now hanging right there. So what we're gonna do now is take this cord, we're gonna take that, put it in the back side of this, and I believe it is the top one if that red tab is there on the right. And we have what started this whole process and actually is the driver for this entire video is this stupid thing. All right, wish me luck. Put this guy in. All right, good news so far. One is blue. All right, two is gray. Three is brown. Four, yellow. And then five, I believe it's for like the accessory trailer brake. I think five will wish me a dud for now. So what we've done is taken the blue wire from auxiliary number one on the switch panel and hooked it to the blue wire from the original Rough Country switch. So we just pulled 
the switch clicker off and I crushed it with my foot because I just don't like it. Now, theoretically, this 12 volt power source will trigger blue wire to kick the relay and then in turn, turn on my LEDs. We're gonna hit auxiliary one and really pray we don't hear like a pop and a sizzle on the bang. Please, 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 please work. Yes, we have a manly switch to turn on some manly lights for a truck that my wife drives. So this auxiliary one turns on my 10 inch LEDs now. Oh my gosh, that is so much more satisfying than that other crap that we were running. Let's get back working, get everything put back together. Oh, we've left to put back together. Right, guys we got the switch in everything works nothing blew up so this is a big success very happy about this day mostly happy because this is amazing it's so silly to be so excited about a switch but I'm genuinely that excited about it we have so much more room for activities which is kind of a joke but really not we have four total auxiliaries we can play with and really when I get down to it figure out what this fifth one is really for but just being able to hit this button instead of that silly toggle switch that wouldn't stay in place and kept falling and flopping around this is a big difference and I'm truly stoked about it and the simplicity the fit and finish this is a GM OEM product so I've never worried about anything fitting all the cables were the exact right length there was no trimming really needed you just plug everything when it's ready to go turn it on drive away i'm really excited about this i have been hanging on to this for a while knowing that this installation is going to take a little while if i wanted to do it right and slowly and not break anything that's my one key point is give yourself enough time for this project if you guys are tackling this for yourself as a non-DIY person, as Chevrolet so elegantly described in their instructions. We have four additional options for, I'm gonna call them activities for that one switch panel. So more to come for sure, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in with me today. We had a blast, by the way, at the little boy's party. My whole bounce house going in the garage. Freaking riot! But as always, guys, if you enjoyed this one, be sure to smash that like button below. Helps me out, helps the channel out, helps us continue to grow. Be sure if you haven't yet, subscribe to the channel, but that's gonna do it. We'll catch you guys in a few days for our next video here in paradise. Until that day comes, y'all take care. Oh, we hope. Aloha. This is what happens when you go to grandpa's house. Take the Chevelle, right there. Oh, try this one. Oh. 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 Yeah, no, 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 no